Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. Happy New Year to you. From Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, we hear, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our prelude this morning is a video. Um, please prepare your hearts for worship as we watch the video. Would you rise this morning and join me in the call to worship? O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. 
would you join me please in the unison prayer found in the bulletin. Almighty and ever living God, you reveal the incarnation of your son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands and accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise and for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning will be We Three Kings. The Old Testament reading this morning comes to us from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. 
Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. As our children come forward this morning, we'll be singing Jesus Loves the Little Children. JR money, and they both wanted to give me their money. They are sweet, sweet kids. Okay, how are you? Okay, something's really different from the last time we were here. What? No, well, yeah, that's different. We're the only people. But I was thinking bigger. Yeah, what are those? They're the camels. Do you see the three kings over there? So now we have a full nativity set, right? And everybody's happy. But there's something else that's different. It's a new year. What year is it? I hope so. Okay, it's a brand new year. So what'd you do for New Year's Eve? Go out partying? Where'd you go? Ooh, that was nice. Did you have a good time? Did y'all say Happy New Year? And y'all hugged and kissed at midnight? I love you guys. You're something else. Okay. Today we have the wise men and we have um, the camels because now everybody who came to visit Jesus when he was born has arrived. Who else was there the week before? Mary and Joseph, the angel and the, the shepherds. So now everybody's there, and they've all come to visit this baby. What's so special about this baby? It's Jesus Christ. What other names do we have for Jesus? Do you know any other names? Emmanuel, God with us. Very good. Our Savior. Very good. What's it mean? Our leader. Savior comes from the word save. What does it mean to save? Protect. It keeps you from something. It saves you, protects you. And so we gave these out on Christmas Eve, and you probably got some to take home if your parents picked them up. And these, they probably packed those away with trees. You throw your tree up. That's right, because that's Orthodox Christmas. Their calendar's a week, two weeks behind us. So they, or no, a week behind us. They celebrate on the 6th and the 13th. Just a different calendar. Well, I'm going to give you another one, and what does it say? I picked these purposely. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenna. What's it say? You know what that word is? No. Savior. Okay, because I want you to find somewhere to put this in your room so that you always remember who is Jesus, our Savior, and he saves us. He saves us from our sins by allowing us to say, I'm sorry, and the Our Father. Did you like that video this morning? It was really beautiful, wasn't it? The animals were amazing. I knew you would. They were darling. But what's so amazing is that God created all of that, and he created us too, and then he sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, we do give you thanks for this new year 
and this first Sunday of the new year where we come together to sing your praises, dear God. We come to remember that there were wise men, not Jewish, not believers, who came and worshipped and helped us to realize just exactly who this baby in the manger was. So, dear God, be with us each and every Sunday and day of this coming year. Be with Jenna and JR and just protect them in this year and truly teach them what it means for you to be their Savior. Amen. You're going to go back with your parents until we do communion. Okay. I'm going to invite you to find in your bulletin the ritual for communion. We don't very often do this, but I wanted to use Wesley's covenant prayer. And so I wanted us to kind of do the whole um, ritual part. Gentlemen, you're going to need one of these. You'll have to take them out of the bulletins that are left back there or come get yours. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us pray the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our, love, and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, spoke to us through the prophets, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim captive release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus Christ ascended, he promised to be with us always, in the power of your word and your Holy Spirit. On the night that Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks, poured it out, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in the final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will receive the gifts that Christ offers this day. <clears throat> Take and eat. This is Christ's body broken for you.
partake and drink your cup of salvation. O Lord God, Holy Father, who has called us through Christ to be partakers in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and engage ourselves for the love of you to seek and to do your perfect will. We are no longer our own, but yours. Let us join in the covenant prayer as we enter into 2022. I am no longer mine, but yours, O God. Put to me what you would. Rank me with whomever you would. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh gracious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, I am yours, so be it. And this agreement which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Would you join me in number 413, A Charge to Keep I Have? The gospel lesson this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, 
they returned to their country by another route. For everyone that was, was just pining away to see these beautiful camels, who truly do need a paint job, by the way. <laughs> of course, if you were as old as they were, you would too. And our three wise men. The, the picture is complete in our mind. And it's the last we will hear of the birth of Jesus. Because everything has been accomplished. The wise men are here to fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah 60. That kings from Sheba would come and would give gold and incense. And so the night that Christ was born, there was a star born. The star of the east, the eastern star. And these three put together a journey, and it was a journey, a thousand miles on camel, no Holiday Inn slept on the ground. You know, we, we are so used to just convenience. And when you think back, there was no convenience for them. Not even for poor Jesus who was born in an in a, in a animal trough. So they finally get to Jerusalem. The star leads them all the way from Persia to Jerusalem. And then the star disappears. So they figured that's okay because we're in Jerusalem and Herod the king lives in Jerusalem and the king would surely know where the new king was born. These were wise men, but I'm not sure they thought that one through very clearly. So they go up to the palace and they say, you know, we would like to know where the new king is born. We saw his star rise the night that he was born, and we've brought gifts, and we want to worship him. And Herod is absolutely clueless. Although, please remember, Herod is a Jew. We forget that. So Herod maybe should have been a little more learned, learned about that. So he calls his religious advisors in, and they go through the scriptures, and it's very easy all they have to do is go to Micah and it says, but you Bethlehem, you Ephra, you Bethlehem, you might be small, but you won't be the least for this. the holy child will be born in Bethlehem. And so that's what Herod tells them with one more piece of information. When you find him, come back and tell me because I want to go worship him. Well, the wise men are just delighted to know where they're going. And, you know, lo and behold, they walked outside that palace, and guess what reappeared? Yep, -er, that star. Takes them right to the house where Mary and Joseph and the baby are living. And Mary and, Joseph, or Mary and the baby are there. We don't hear anything about Joseph. But remember, Joseph was a carpenter by trade. He could have been in the shop working. And it says they bowed down and they worshipped this child, who's now two. Remember when your child was two? Yeah, they don't sit still very long. <laughs> or often. And they don't really care that there's three kings there. They might have been interested in the camel, though. So they give Mary their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Silly gifts for a baby shower, yes? I mean, receiving blankets and diapers and um, onesies would probably have been a whole lot more practical. They may not have been practical for Jesus the baby, but they certainly were for Jesus and the life that he was going to live. Gold represents royalty. And frankincense represents deity and myrrh represents immortality and humanity and so we've got the wealth we've got the king we've got the prophet and we've got the priest 
And then there's one more very important piece to that scripture. And it's the verse that we kind of just skip over because we get so enthralled in gold, frankincense, and myrrh that we kind of forget what could be the most important verse of that whole scripture. And they were warned in a dream to go home another way. These aren't people of God not of the one true God. These are very smart magi, magicians, very learned, but were probably worshiping pagan gods and probably more than one. And what brought them to Jesus wasn't the fact that they believed Jesus was the Son of God. What brought them to Jesus was the star that was born that night, and they knew that had to mean that this child that all of Jerusalem and Judea and the Jewish nation was waiting for had been born. But when God sends the dream, our God, the great Yahweh God, the one and only true God, when he sends the dream, they believe it. And it doesn't seem to be any debate. They get up and they go home a different way. They avoid Herod. And they avoid the palace. And they return home by a different path. Herod did not want to worship the baby Jesus. If you continue in that chapter, you read about Herod's slaughter of the two-year-old boys, two years old and under, in Bethlehem. But the focus is not on the gifts. The focus is on what happens to these three men. Do they become believers in the one God? We have no way of knowing. That's one of those questions that God just lets open-ended because what it does is give them the possibility of becoming one of the family. And what visiting the baby Jesus did for them was give them new expectations and new possibilities. And as we come together January 2nd, that's what we're looking at. New expectations, new possibilities, new promises of the God that we worship. We all have some desire for 2022, how it will be better, how it will be different. Will it be the year that Christ comes? Will it be the year that the world finally learns to live together? Or will it be the year where the world finally destroys itself? Or will it just be another year like the 2021 years before? We have no way of knowing that. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. The visit of the wise men for the church celebrates Epiphany. Epiphany, the season when we celebrate the light of the world coming into the darkness. Jesus as the light of the world. God breaking into the darkness of sin with a star with a baby, with new possibilities, with new opportunities, with new expectations. And so today, as we celebrate and we, partake, we had partaken of God's Holy Communion, and we use that covenant prayer, that's Wesley's covenant prayer, that he prayed every single day. Wesley took communion every day. Between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, he would get up and take communion. Not a practice I know many people follow today. I don't know any pastors that even do that. This one does not. Remember, this one does not like grape juice. So she's not getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to drink any grape juice. But Wesley did because he felt he kept... That's how he kept himself close to God. That's how he kept that Holy Spirit burning in his heart. 
That's why we partake of communion the first Sunday of every month. And it was debatable. Should we do it the first Sunday? Should we wait and do it the second Sunday? No, we need to do it as early into the new year as possible. And we need to read this covenant prayer and renew our covenant relationship with God to say, I'm not yours, I'm yours. I'm not mine, I'm yours. Whatever you want for me is what I want. Because we're journeying a new path. We're journeying somewhere that will take us closer to our Lord. We're moving in a direction that deepens that relationship. But how? See, for the wise men, it was pretty easy. They got up, they went to the people that were directing the camels, and they said, get us out of here without going through Jerusalem. And so their navigators, their servants, knew how to do that. And so they went home a different way. We're going to go on a new journey in 2022. None of us know exactly what that journey will be right now. Oh, we might for the next day or two or week. But we don't know for the long term. But what we do know is we just read and renewed a covenant that said we wanted to be closer to God. And so we need to know how are we going to do that. And we're going to do it by our actions. This is on us. See, God is there just waiting to take our hand and lead us, but he's not going to grab it and pull you along like the two-year-old you pull out of the store when they want the candy and you don't want them to have it. That's not how God works. God waits for us to place our hand in his. So couple suggestions. First of all, in your bulletin, there's a Bible reading chart. Kind, the print's a little small, but you all have magnifying glasses at home. If you follow this, by next December 31st, you will have read the entire Bible. Some of it will be fun reading. Some of it won't. There's some tough stuff in the Word of God. Because otherwise, it's not going to help us grow. So that's one way. I wanted to give that to you. I copied it offline by permission and from a bookstore in Staten Island, in New York. And like there's a little thing on the back which gives you all the books of the Bible and how many there are and how many are not old and how many are new. Because sometimes we just need to refresh ourselves on those facts. I'm good with that because I just finished confirmation class. So I'm real good on 66, 27, 39. I got all that in my head. Don't ask me to recite the books of the Bible for you because I can't do that. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Maybe First and Second Kings, I don't know. No. <laughs> but I know how to find them. And this will give you a reading guide for every day. Okay, so you know what? I don't get the first done. Okay, skip to the second tomorrow. Or today is the second. Skip to the third. You know, it's a guide. But be more deliberate in your Bible reading. Be more committed. If you don't like this, pick a book. John's a wonderful book for believers. Psalms is a wonderful book for believers. Stay away from Revelation unless you're going to use a guide or a friend to do it with. Because your imagination will run wild. Or call me. Or text me. I have people that text me Bible questions all the time. That's fine. You know, it's kind of what I'm here for. And if I don't know the answer, and I'm always honest when I don't, I'll do the research. I'll see what I can find out. But we've got to get back into God's word. That has to be part of our new path. We have to be committed to a new kind of prayer life. You know, I cannot agree with 95% of the Quran or with how the Muslims practice their religion, except when that call to prayer happens, their lives stop. 
and they pray. Maybe a rote prayer may not mean anything, but I like the fact that they are raised to know that when the call to prayer happens, they pray. So maybe on your watch or your cell phone or your oven timer, maybe you should set it to a certain time. And when it goes off, whatever's going on, just stop and have a prayer time. Doesn't have to be an hour. God will take five minutes. And then when you see what a difference that makes, that five minutes will turn into ten minutes. But we need to have a committed prayer time. We have a long prayer list. You probably can't get through all those at one time. That's okay. Break it into pieces so that you can cover all of it in one day. And then when you're praying, take time to listen. Prayer is a two-way conversation. We have a tendency to come in with our list. God, I need you to, to touch da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And then this person needs that, and that person needs this, and amen. Well, where's God's chance to talk? Where's God's chance to say, my child, I need you. I need you to be an instrument of peace. I need you to be an agent of love. I need you to be an example of forgiveness. Take time not just to talk, but to listen. And then to follow. There are so many ways, simple ways, that we can share our testimony without going out on a street corner and preaching it. I bet Juanita would love a phone call once in a while from somebody. I know Bev and Jim would. There are lots of people in our congregation, people say, how's Ann Yoder? Well, I can tell you how Ann Yoder is, but let me tell you how you could find out how Ann Yoder is. Bev, or Judy. Deb happened to call Judy and we found out she had a broken foot. See, we have to be willing to do that. That's part of the new path. That's part of serving God. That's part of being instruments of peace and agents of love and examples of grace and forgiveness. And they followed the warning in the dream and they went home by a different path. We're at the beginning of a new year. Let's follow the commitment that we made with our lips, with the actions of our lives. And let us go into 2022 by a new path. A path that will lead us closer to God. We'll deepen our relationship with Jesus and will open all the new possibilities and the new expectations that God has for us in 2022. Amen. Joys and concerns are on the back of your bulletin. I have a lot of sad news this morning. So somebody had better have some joys. You'd be thinking about the joys. I got the concerns covered. Um, Jane Scott, who we prayed for last week, she passed away on Friday, Thursday morning, New Year's Eve day. Um, we don't know what's happening. Everything's out in Arizona, but please keep her family in your prayers. Um, she hadn't been here for a while, but many of you knew her because when I announced the name last week, many of you. So she, she's gone home to Jesus. She, her new year and her new path is in the heavenly kingdom. And... Um, Edwin asked us to pray for uh, Dave, and he passed away. And if they're not going to get better, Jesus took him home. So we want to pray for him. Um, Dan is not doing much better, I'm sorry to say, but Darlene has COVID. And so um, she needs to rest. 
and yet she can't really do that right now. <laughs> so please keep them both in your prayers. Ruth has a friend, Byron Jackson, who goes on those mission trips, and he fell and broke his arm. Keep him in your prayers. Sydney and um, Karen both have COVID, and they got antibody infusions. Um, so hopefully that is good. Um, I saw Linda Butts this week. And Ken is not doing well. He has to go to another neurologist. So please keep Linda and Ken in your prayers because, again, she's got issues, but she's so busy taking care of him, she doesn't take care of herself. So um, I told you, I seem to have all bad news today. I'll give you one piece of good news. Bob Collins is in church today. So that's a good thing. That shows us God's healing power. Well, I know he doesn't want any of that, but we're... But we're giving God that glory and praise. When did you have surgery? November. Yep. Yep. So, what joys and concerns do you have this day? Did you have a Merry Christmas? Okay, so that's a joy. Bob. That's what a church family does. What other joys and concerns do you have? Kathy. There's a, there are additions to the Davis family. Two black kittens. Soot and Cinder. I love the names. And they like Edwin better than Kathy. <laughs> but that's okay. She's going to kick him out of the house on some kind of um, work thing, and then they'll get to bond with her. So, Happy New Year with your new babies. Any other joys or concerns? Dana. What's her first name? Lindsay. Okay, we'll keep Lindsay in our prayers. And I'll put it on my calendar so I pray for her Tuesday morning. Other joys or concerns? Um, Amy. Yes, David's an Eagle Scout. Congratulations, that's a lot of work. And if you like those new signs around town, those are David's. That was his service project. So congratulations, David. Other joys or concerns? Pam. 20 years. Wow. You look like newlyweds. Congratulations. Congratulations. Other joys or concerns this day? Anyone I'm not seeing up there because I'm down here? Then we don't get to sing this carol very often. Did you have another one? What? Tiffany. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I was, I was, yeah. Um, you'll see one. I don't know which one's up, but you'll see both of them. Thank you. That's what you were trying to tell me to see my screens off. I can't see anything. So I've got a blank screen. So yes, we got one from Romaine. We got two from Romaine and one from Gwen, right? And I guess the kids were just absolutely over the moon and they should have been. Those bags were very, very, very full. So, no other joys or concerns. Thank you, Matt. Then our prayer hymn is the first Noel. to search in 
verse 4, please, ma'am. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the privilege and the desire and the ability to be in this, your house, as we continue to celebrate this season of joy with the celebration of the arrival of the Magi, those from the East who came to bring the very important gifts for Jesus' life and how, dear God, their visit brought light into darkness for so many people. Thank you for loving us so very, very much. And we pray that as we continue through these last days of celebration, we might keep focused upon the real reason why we celebrate. And that is the joy and the salvation that a tiny baby who grew into a savior gave to each of us. We come to you giving thanks and praise for birthdays and anniversaries and for those who have not been able to be with us to be back. And yet, dear God, we do come to you with heavy hearts. We pray you'd be with the Scott family and we pray you would be with Patty and her family as they deal with this loss. And gracious God, we pray that you would be with all the COVID victims that you would be with Darlene and you would be with Sydney and you would be with Karen and that it might be a very mild case. Touch Ken and relieve him from pain and help Brian's arm to heal since he does so much, dear God, to help others. And help Lindsay to just know that she won't go into surgery alone because the God who created and loves her will carry her through in his strong arm. And continue to be with Bob, dear God, and help him to keep, keep getting stronger. And dear God, we pray that your spirit would touch Dan's and that he would see a gift that he's been given. And now we pray for Darlene, dear God, that, that she might have a mild case and soon be symptom free. And just give her strength, dear God, for she is really worn out and she needs your strength to continue. And gracious God, search our hearts, for we do have concerns. We have concerns for our own well-being. We have concerns for our families. We have concerns for people who don't know you. We have concerns, dear God, for people that are going through emotional problems. And we just pray, Lord, that you would be with each and every one of them and you would supply their need. And Lord, help us not to enter this new year with any fear, but only with the assurance that the God for whom nothing is impossible is the God who will guide and direct us and that that is the God who still controls this world. We ask all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, if you look at your bulletin, uh, the financial reports are all very, very good. We sent to the Kentucky victims $2,410, which is absolutely amazing. That included $530 from the cookie bash, which brings us to the cookie bash. We cleared $4,856. So this is why we need to do a cookie bash. <laughs> I mean, just let me be very plain and honest. We can't afford not to do one. 
This year went particularly smooth. Um, so hopefully we can build on how we did it this year and it'll go even smoother next year and um, we'll sell more, although we sold an awful lot as it is. Our Christmas offering to date was $3,722. And I think you need to know all of that. Um, we did end the, uh, the year in the black, correct, Buck? Everything's paid. There were no outstanding bills, and we have a little bit of cash in the bank. Um, not enough if the roof blows off, but enough if we have to pay a bill. So, But um, we've had, we were blessed. 2021 was a year of blessings for us. Uh, your 22 envelopes are still over on the table. I don't want to send all those envelopes out because I have two full boxes. So if there's somebody's over there that you know that aren't going to get here, could you just take them for us? That would, that would save us some trouble. Gentlemen, Tuesday night, 6.30 at Bud Murphy's, you're having your meeting. Um, have I forgotten any announcements? Donna, Tiffany, Carol. Okay. If you three don't know any, then I don't know any either. Let us continue worshiping God by giving to him our tithes and our offerings. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for every good and perfect gift that you've given to us so freely. And now, dear God, we offer you our imperfect gifts, yet gifts we give to show our love, our devotion, and our desire to travel to you in this new year. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is found on an insert in the bulletin, The Light of the World is Jesus. We'll be singing verses 1 and 4.
now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace and may you go forth following the light of the world who is Jesus. Amen.